I've made a start um, with the tracks and painting, well I've done the tracks but the uh, painting the black detail uh, probably doesn't look too bad from further away but when you look at it close uh, to be honest that's a terrible job it's black's gone all over the place uh, however I'm not too worried it looks absolutely terrible but I will be neatening it up so we've got far too much I've obviously tried to get it on the um, on the inside of the tracks and this is just the black and obviously the the, the rubber that goes round those wheels because uh, you can see that those are sort of uh, tyres on there uh, but far too much but what we're going to be able to do is neaten up so I've done done the first one just as an experiment because it took a while and now I'm going to do the second one uh, what I will want to do before putting silver on there the outsides I think are going to need another coat of black because there's quite a bit of the uh, the, the light brown showing through so it will need a second coat to thicken it up but we're just going to try to get this on there so again given that a, a mix is quite watered down um, so my sort of tip was just to get my eye in is to do the inside bit first because this is going to be against there so it won't be so visible apart from on the bottom part of it and because it's not going to be unless people are picking up and looking underneath it's not going to be so visible so we're going to start here just whilst we try to get our eye in a bit so the first thing we're going to want to be doing is first of all is to be getting the paint on the inside of the track the only on the outsides so far and on the edges as well so it's just going to be working it through on those is it teeth the runs the tracks but I'm not trying to I'm trying if I can not to get it on the wheels which is just so I'm trying to come in at an angle and sort of push it between makes it quite tough because the teeth on there uh, you can't just get the brush in flat now this is going across the top bit so it actually won't be visible anyway it's a shame because there's some nice moulded details on the these inside wheels which as I say won't be visible at all and at the moment because the tracks getting painted black and the rubber on the on the tires are getting painted black it does there's no sort of differentiation on there but what will happen is once we then go over with the metallic colour on the tracks only that will differentiate between the, uh, the black of the tyres and the, the, the dark metallic of the track. too much you can see that was um not too much on the brush I'm gonna put it in there it's it run that's the other reason you don't want too much on the brush is because um it will leach off so we will be going into neaten it and hopefully we can sort of work out a way to try to add some weathering and mud and that sort of thing as well so and obviously the tracks and the wheels are going to get quite a bit of mud on them but despite my best efforts we've still got a few you know black where we shouldn't have the black so now um, and this is the problem is I'm literally just using the one brush I do have finer brushes uh, which might be a bit better suited for this but I'm usually using what's come in the pack and this is the brush that comes in the pack so it's not as not it's a bit of a one size fits all so now what I want to do is to paint around the rim of each of the tyres and again just going to be doing the outside face first of all I'm not where the rim 
him is. Uh, fortunately, that does actually cover up somewhere it's gone a bit uh, too heavy anyway. And now do the side face, but without trying to get the paint on the, the representation of the wheel behind it. So that's one, and as I say, it does look shoddy. Just going to dab off some of the excess bits. Let's work our way around. Now the rim does have a raised lip that we can go up against. And as I said, um, this brush is sort of a design as a detail brush. I'm just trying to put the minimal amount of paint on the very tip of it as I can. Just let it just touch the surface of the paint. smearing paint over the bits that I don't want to get paint on really really isn't a neat job I'm hoping so I'm hoping that we can neaten and correct correct our mistakes or at least hide them and what yeah what we can't correct at least might be able to be hidden in some weathering process. side and we'll flip it over. Do the other side. We'll have a look at the tiger that I've done before which come which wasn't the starter set. And you can show you how you can get a lot more neater when you're painting things separately. Okay, so that's that side done. At least we're going to look now on it. At least the inside of the track has been painted black, and the edges of the tyres, the rims, edges of the, not the rims, but the uh, yeah, and down the sides. It's got to do that side first, but I'm just going to grab this one first of all. And this is the tank, um, same mouldings, but a few more details on there. So same basic mouldings. Now this one, uh, just to point out, got some bits of track where you can put on um, on the sides there. So spare spare track links, which is done separately. Also tow cables that it supplies with, uh, and some bits on the side, and uh, also some little tow hooks and things as well. Uh, as you can probably see the base colour, the yellow, uh, is the same yellow there but this one's then just been painted with the three-tone camouflage whereas this one just stays the yellow but I guess you, you know, 
could paint that if you wanted to. But what we're really looking down in here, as you can see the wheels have also been painted, but the wheels were all separate. So literally every single wheel there before it got made up. So all the drive gear, everything was separate. So I could take each one of those off and I could paint the rim. I could paint the camouflage on there, get the tire on there. And they also look a lot thinner as well as they're layered up. So that's actually a real wheel behind. And if we flip over, you can sort of see, and there obviously there wouldn't be a camouflage on there but you can still see, um, I don't think I did it too well actually looking at there, I kind of rushed that job. But yeah, so that was actually a lot lot better because I could literally paint each wheel individually, put that in there and then put the, uh, the track around it. Whereas here, it's just a moulded representation. So let's... Uh, now do these ones. So we're just doing the wheels and not the drive or the idling thing, just literally the wheels themselves. But we do want to make sure we do inside of the track. And the down as far as the teeth. too much paint on the brush and it has actually sort of gone down and leaked on to where it needed to go and then leached around the sprocket the teeth on the sprockets so we make sure we get the edges done so first of all just painting the inside edge and the actual edge too much on the brush just now and it will run a bit too far but fortunately what it's run onto is the side of the uh, tyre which will be getting painted black. Uh, so this quick version of the track definitely makes for the build being quicker because building up each of the individual sets of wheels so there was on one of those there's one two three four yeah so there were on each side there was at least actually oh, on the inside as well uh one two three four five six one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve uh, 12 wheels on each side plus the sprockets and things, uh, drive sprockets and then the track that then got done but of course that meant things could get be could be painted separately and detailed so although the build process is a lot quicker because these were literally just two parts sandwiched together it's a lot more work involved in kind of paint. Because 
uh, got quite a bit that's, as I mentioned before, on that sprocket at the front, or was that the idler? One, one of them, the, um, yeah, the paint has run onto the, uh, the part itself, so that's going to need cleaning up. Tires. I guess it's because the edges aren't quite as crisp. The rim. It's a bit tricky because of course I've got to do the edge of the tyre but not get any of the black on the face of the, uh, the wheel that is over the top of. This is why I'm saying doing it as separate wheels is a lot easier. You can barely see this one behind. It still needs to tightly fix a little bit of a little of it and work the paint in the little gaps. seeing the limitations now of this system for doing the uh, track. I mean, there is some nice detail on the wheels themselves, but the track is missing the detail. Scary thing is, I would have thought after doing that one and doing that side as well, my technique 
They have improved, but no, it hasn't. Almost there. Right, okay. So that's on there. Again, looks um, terrible. Uh, or at least the outsides do seem a bit better than the uh, interiors. I've still got a lot of paint where I don't want paint. What I will do, whilst I'm here, I'm just going to pop a bit more paint on the Outsides. No, actually, before I do that, because that mucked up the brush a bit before, I want to just put a little bit more paint on these. Now, these will be getting a metallic colour. Um, it did cross my mind, actually. I was thinking, had a great idea earlier, that what I could do is these, they're so small, to paint, uh, get some liquid mass, which is a type of latex, which I can paint on around the edges. Um, when it dries, it's you, know, you can rub it off, but you just mask it up. And I thought that would be a great idea, but then I thought liquid latex doesn't come with the kit, so I can't use that. And as we know, I'm just trying to use what's in the kit. So, again, these bits will be metallic colour. But I want to put down the black base first of all. With a metallic colour, I'm just not really going to be painting it on, I'm going to be dry brushing it on. Which is a different sort of technique. Now, what I can do, and I have already, is bits where it's been a bit, um, it's a little bit too much has gone on there and it's gone on to the light brown, we can touch it up. And afterwards, just to sort of uh, put some, uh, some of the black, uh, so brown paint over the, yeah, where it's uh, going on to the surface. Then. Tricky bit with when it is moulded on is you can kind of do the tops by rubbing the brush on, you don't kind of get the paint on the side of the tool.
can sort of see the bits that I've done and the bits that I haven't done now. So we do have this, I think it's a, it looks like a telephone. It looks like a very large telephone. But now I've done the, uh, given it the one coat previously, this second coat of black is going on it a lot better. We're getting a lot better coverage now. So those are highlighted a bit more. Uh, got to do that talking of the telephone I remembered, there's one on the back as well. Just gonna take some of the excess paint off. Just uh, now turn that into just a, uh, a black blob. This is going to need to be neatened because now this doesn't have any representation of being a telephone handset or a radio. No, that's just, I've just put some black away, right? Pop a bit more in the exhausts. Especially on that inside part. Okay, so that is just a that's just an, a, a mess. Um, all I'm going to be able to do is with that, and I think likewise with that one as well, is once that's dry, is um get more of the brown paint and then sort of go up to the edges of it with the brown paints. It's just gone too much over the main surface. Um, so I've just got some sprockets and stuff in here. Across my mind, these little uh, suspension arms could uh, those could all be sort of painted. That's what I could just do. It's just roughly dry brush then. By that I mean that's what I'm going to be doing with the um, with the uh, upper bits um, with the metallic. But whilst I've hardly got anything left on the brush, I'm just rubbing it over those. Just to give a bit more uh, so they don't look so clean. And you can even try doing that with those, just a bit of flick. 
Yeah, I bet. Some of that raised detail is just starting to come out because we're using a bit of the black in there. In fact, that's worked so well, just to highlight a raised detail. I might even do that. The edges of these wheels. I think we're now finally getting here with this uh, Airfix Tiger one. So with the tracks, I have done um, a little bit more neatening up. Essentially, what I've done is, um, I couldn't be bothered on this side because no one's gonna see it. Um, <coughs> so I used the brush and the problem is it has actually started to get a fork in it. So it's almost like two, um, two brushes in one. It, I was doing some fine stuff. I did consider actually where, where it kind of forks um, is to trim one of the bits off so it's a lot more of a finer brush. But I might do that later. We'll see if I need to do some final details. But I do need it a bit more brush like for um, hopefully doing a bit of a, a wash on there. Uh, so with the wheels themselves, I've, um, so I put a bit of a second coat of the 94 on there just to try to um, go up, up to the rim and then use the black again just to try to uh, just go around the edges a little bit more just to really define that line and I think it looks a bit better a bit more solid black on the tyres 
and now we've uh, got the solid black tracks. So now what we're going to do is we're going to paint all the bits that are actually say that this should be painted in the metallic colour, which is the 53. Um, but this is, I think, far too light. This is much more of a steel colour, where of course in real life, and if you look on the front as well, you know, the tracks are really black with, um, you know, they're all rust, that sort of thing, but with a few highlights, which is why we've based them on the, uh, on, uh, on the black base, put the base down of the black. So, I think I pre-watered this. I think it have, I did attempt using this one and then realized just how light it was. So let's pop this open and we will, you can see the sort of the pigment in there with the metallic one. It has, yeah, we've got a few lumps in there. So as with all of these little pots, we're really making sure we get rid of those lumps because those lumps are the pigments and it really does bug me that this is not mentioned in the instructions that you need to just add some water to it just to loosen it up and loosen up and give it a few coats um, just to build it up slowly because when people just think that you just do one coat of this using this straight from the pot before you do any thins no preparation that's when people's models go but you can see uh, you know, the details, the little raised details and stuff really uh, are still coming out and that's had, what's that, four or five coats on there. You try doing four or five coats without this being thinned, you'll just end up with a blob. So, we're going to dry brush, not paint this. So, we're hardly going to use any of this, so I'm going to just get most of that off of there because this is just far too light the colour and you can see how that brush has um, just started to split into two a bit there. So what we'll do is we've got some of this on the brush and I'm going to take most of it off. I'm just going to pop it in again. I'm more just trying to work it between the bristles. And now as I rub it, you can see there's hardly anything there. So we're going to come to the tracks and uh, I'm going to do the top bit first of all, uh, the inside top bit, which would be um, not visible, just make sure that this is going to work okay. And I'm just going to start dragging it along, and suddenly it starts and just flicking it, picking up those raised bits. Suddenly, that's looking a lot more. Uh... And what I want to do is uh, okay, I want to make sure, doing the edges, that I'm avoiding the tyres, because at the moment, what doesn't make this look very good is that they, the tyres and the track are all the same colour black. But what I want to do, you can see I've hardly got anything on the brush, so I'll put a little bit on the end of the brush, you can hardly see that, and what I do put on the brush, 90% of it goes on the uh, on the paper. And I'm just flicking it over the edges of those teeth. So now we're more just putting on a metallic sheen, okay? Um, one of the problems is, I say problems with this, is compared to this, this track. This track um, has got little chevrons on there, the little actual sort of grip in the links, which uh, this one is just quite plain. So we're not picking out any sort of raised detail bar the actual uh, part of those links themselves. Now the problem is with doing this, is this is the sort of thing that does actually muck up your brush. So I'm just sort of flicking it like that and I'm almost bringing it into contact. So just as it starts making contact, that's about the um, how I want it to go. And it's just hopefully just hitting the edges. And we're going to have the inside of this looks absolutely terrible, but as I say, it's... Um, no one's going to see that because that's going to be stuck into the body of the tank itself. I mean, what we could 
could do as well, I'm just going to take a little bit actually from there and just in here. I'm just going to do a few little dabs. What I want to try to do is those little raised details, those, some of those little nuts um, on there. See if I can. Uh, no, that's okay, I don't want to risk that too much. Because the problem is with this, if you load up too much, if it goes on it, then this is uh, this is something that you build up slowly. You don't try to do it in, you know, just load the brush up and go right, slap it on. That's painting. This is dry brushing. And by that it means that the brush is pretty much dry. But now, you can sort of compare that. You can see, yeah, there's a lot more, uh, that's standing up. That's just a black lump of plastic. So now we've got the differentiation between the tyres and the metallic track. Um, I do want to just sort of do the insides a little bit. Now there's no raised detail, this is smooth. I just want to try to um, more brush it over just so it takes off that harsh black. And it's, if anything, it kind of just has the metallic sheen on there. Making sure that I only do it on the bits uh, where it's actually the track inside, and not the rubber of the tire. So I'm not painting it. I'm literally just going to just getting a few little particles of paint on there to give it that sheen, and it just differentiates. Just catches the light a little bit differently. I've got to say, I am very, very disappointed in my painting in here. Even so, it's still. Uh, I mean, to be, it's it's obvious that those tyres are painted on. That does not look like rubber. Uh, the other thing as well is rubber is not actually strictly completely black. That's just another story. But that has now got that metallic sort of look to it. So I'll do this one. Actually, I'll just do a quick. photo for there. on there that was enough for if I was going to be actually painting so just to start off with again I'm just going to start up here so if I've loaded too much on the brush it's not going to be so visible actually, there we go. when I'm actually getting a brush stroke I'm actually trying to because I don't want lines you wouldn't actually have a line going across on those edges because those are the bits where uh, okay you know the tracks are made of iron you're going to get mud on them you're going to get water you're going to get rust um, rust in this sort of situation is going to be more of a darker blacker sort of rust not your nice sort of pristine sort of ready iron oxide rust it's just going to be sort of darkened and that's what we're looking for but due to the wear, the edges, the, the teeth, those are the bits that are going to be in moving around and therefore they're going to be getting clean. Rust, mud deposits, that sort of thing, are going to just get naturally cleaned off those sort of raised areas. This along just to be a bit of a comparison just don't want one to be more than the other. Look a bit odd if 
one side was completely metallic and chipped and the other side pretty much black. Right, so this is the inside part. Again, going over the edges. tell how this does messy brush up. Put a little bit more in there and take it off again. And now we're just going to go on the insides again. So it's a pity there's no raised detail. painting it with this and putting a sheen of it. Just so the black of the track is a slightly different shade than the black of the rubber tire. Shame that actually some of the most best, uh, most most best, some of the best detail on these tracks is the bit on the inside part, which uh, won't be seen. I'm just doing a bit of that on that cog because though it's painted, the paint would be chipped off of there. So we have a lot more. That's a much more solid. looking metallic there. Okay, so not perfect, but uh, yeah, raised detail and <laughs> if anything I'm still thinking that metallic's still too light. Personally, if I was to be using this I'd do a much more darker metallic, more of an iron. This is a bit too silvery for my liking. More of a sort of a darker gun metal. So now uh, we'll go to the other parts that are on here. So 53, so that's going to be the little telephones, the tools on the top, and of course the gun barrel and machine gun that's coming out. So again, we're not painting, and remember we've already put the pre coat on here. So I'm not going to try to paint these bits. Uh, I'm going to. Okay, that little box, I'm going to keep that black. Uh, again, I should have probably done this bit first because now this brush, as you can see, it's a lot more wider now. These bristles are no longer together as a point. Remember when we first took this out, it was a, a nice sort of, um, you can see it's, it's forked now. When we took it out of the box, it was a nice pristine brush. So I'm just going to pop this over the digging part, the blade. So I'm not, not trying to paint it. Just maybe put the sheen of it over. I'm doing that with the spade up there. I'm leaving the handle black. And what I did do as well, I think, is, um, was to get some of the 94 on this and, and just sort of carefully go up to the edges. I mean, that brush is absolutely uh, shocking now. Would have been better to have done this first uh, before doing that pit because getting it in between all those tracks, that's what's messed this up. And we've got those exhaust pipes as well, which are metallic. So 
and that's had the black coating on there. You know, because those aren't going to be a nice shiny colour, are they? They're going to be uh, all dirty with the heat. <coughs> so now effectively we've painted everything that needs to be painted. Whilst we're here, we're going to add a few little chips on and just try. I've, I've actually sort of dry brushed with the black. I actually just, you know, brushed that over a little bit in places just to re pull some of those details out. So I'm just going to hardly have anything I'm using, I'm trying to the off bits there. I'm just going to really gently. I do need a little bit more on there. Now, really, really gently, I'm just going to flick it over the raised detail. You need a bit more on there. Not that much. So hopefully it will look that on edges there might be some sort of like chipping going on. Oh, I've still got to do the gun barrel. And of course that's black. I'm just gonna pop a bit of that over it just to add a sheen to it. Oh we got those bits there and hopefully this will just now just pick out that raised detail, those little teeth on the drive sprockets. Little bits here. Made contact yet? There we go. I'm just trying to sort of see if I can sort of add a bit of a um, like it has been paints getting chipped off on the bottom. Not really, kind of getting the effect that I want at the moment. Yeah, it's just very lightly just adding a bit of a metallic. It just catches the light to the eye. Not too sure it's getting picked up on the camera, but some of those raised details are just catching the eye. So whereabouts are you going to get paint chipped off? It's going to be around the edges, around this sort of skirt bit. Otherwise, you wouldn't have this all dirty and have pristine markings over. So I think that'll be the next job. But it is just pulling that detail out. So, I think what we can do, I'll just finish that, we might do a bit more of that once it's together, just to unify it all. Let's pop these final bits on. Here's the glue. So now we've painted up there, we're going to slot each of those covers over there. Those are looking a little bit clean and pristine actually, so we will want to uh, dirty those up a little bit, but we better do it all together. So a little blob with the bubble. Excess off because I don't want glue splurging out because now we've painted it, that would be a bit obvious. That's 
one. So they do actually stand out a little bit because they're not as dirt. we will need to dirty those up, especially being exhausts. Okay, let's take the tracks. These just push on. Actually, we probably should put a little down of glue on there. So I'm just going to pop a little part on that one. And actually, with each of these. I'm just going to put a little blob of glue on the end because when that goes on there that will then slide down. To be honest these are quite a tight fit so I don't think the glue is really necessary. I'll just do the same on that side so a little blob on the end of there. finished now. There we go. Uh, oh, of course decals. So we'll pop the decals on. But it does still look a little bit a little bit too new. I mean not too much actually. I have you know done a bit of dry brushing up that pre-shading went on there as well so that's just darkened up those parts there. Pop that off in a minute. And the decals <laughs> Tray, more of the water. We don't need much. Uh, actually, let's just use it. That's, it's the little. It's just a little lid of a plastic box. Just pop some water in there. Let's get our little deco sheets. It's not too many, and as you can see, they are numbered on there. So we've only got four decals to go on. Oh, actually, that was, uh, five because those crosses are duplicated. So I'm going to take these. We've got deco one, deco two. Pop those. As I said, you can see hardly any and goes in there. You're going to get those ones done first. I'm leaving the number on just because it helps remember which one's which. Yeah. Turn that over. You can see how little water I'm using there. So we've got in there decal one, decal two. Where do these go? Uh, so decal number one's, uh, decal number two's there, so that's going to be number one, which ironically, um, I was going to say they haven't shown, but they've just shown on a little cutaway bit there. So this is going to go here, and we can just look. And what will happen is we've got a bit of a line there, and a little bit of a, a bulgy thing that the cross goes over, and you can see that there's the cross, and there's a very faint sort of line basically where it would follow that so that's going to be the number goes there and the cross just goes over the bottom of that and I can use the brush just to help get that on so number one goes on the right hand side I'm 
So that's just starting to move a vessel. What we'll do, just take a little bit of the, not wet, but damp brush. Just brush that over there. Take our first decal. off, we don't want it too wet. You, you don't want moisture underneath, if you can help it, so just slide that off. And now, because there's a bit of moisture under it, we can just get that into position where it looks like the cross is on top of that little raised detail. But it's not completely stop, you know, right in the middle of it. And then just use the brush to slowly dab that into place. A bit more water on there. And just sort of brush that on. We might want to give that a few more brushes of water just to soften that a bit more, just to help it conform around that raised detail. Is that actually, I don't think that's on. On straight. There we go. We'll take off this one. Again, just using a little dab of the water. That's far too much. I should have basically what I tried to do is wet the brush and then dry the brush, almost like the dry brushing, just so it's got that a damp surface, not a wet surface. Cool, has gone on, but because this is quite a uh, a matte surface, as in it's not shiny, it's it's kind of gripping to the paint, which is good. I'm going to be careful. Try to get it about the same on both sides. Just say so the white part of the cross going over that lumpy bit. And just use the brush just to paint it, effectively paint it on, get it nice and smooth and I think we've got it there. So that's that part done, a couple more of these. So. So number four is pretty much the same as well. And then number three, what's this number three? It's basically two, so that's not just one decal, that's actually, so you've got one number on, but it, that number three refers to both of those crosses. So not too many decals, but should be enough just to give it a little bit of, a uh, little bit of extra something. Yeah, it just brings it brings it to life. So that one, we've got the three, three, four with a cross each side. That goes on the back of that that curved bit there, and the two crosses will go on the side of the main pole. So is that starting to move? Almost. I don't want to leave it in the water for too long because I do find sometimes they they will you want them to soften but sometimes they can actually soften too much that they will start uh, breaking up so what I tend to do is once they're sort of wet so you can see with this one I've just kind of moved it to the side so I want the water to soak into the paper uh, but not just completely get saturated 
So what I'm doing is I'm just sliding that off. Probably a bit tricky to see from this angle. I've not got enough hands so it gets a bit of a grip on there and then slide the paper out from underneath you don't want to pick it up and hold it by a, a decal there we go that's actually that's a bit high let's move that down a touch Ideally what would happen is, if you were doing this um, and you had a bit more kit, as I say, I'm just literally using it from the box, uh, you'd paint it, you'd make it pristine, you, and then you put the uh, a gloss coat on so you have a nice, smooth, shiny surface. Put the decals on so then they would sit on that shiny surface. Then once the decals have dried and have bedded down nicely, you could then put on over a matte coat and then sort of build your weathering up. So there'd be even more layers there. What I'm doing there is I'm just brushing over water, or I say water, just with a damp, just to help them sort of bed down and try to get that to soften and work our way around those little raised lumps. So pop the crosses on each side. So whereabouts does these go? Uh, that's going to go in line with, we've got the wheel here, and then actually you can see pretty much there's a, the arrow there, cuts the front of that wheel, that one there, is the centre of the cross, and that's the wheel there. So the centre of that cross is, we're going to take that wheel, draw a line up, and it's going to be, and I'm just going to pop a little bit of water there. So the centre of that cross will be there. So let's take these the crosses. They, there's no sort of right way up. So and then move that cross. So we've got that, the front of that wheel goes up. And of course, we're going to make that straight. And it's going to be straight with the top edge. Actually, what I'm going to do, use a cocktail stick. Just something pointy. That's better. Use a bit more control. Make sure that is, as I say, straight with that line, not that line. Okay, so it's straight with the top part, which is level perpendicular with the ground. Flip it over and again same on the other side. So just dampen that part. So we know it's going to be in that area. That's the line up. Take the decal, see if I can just slide it off. Place and as we've experienced, cocktail stick. That's went straight into the correct position there. Now what you might find is sometimes just uh, with the decals coming back over a few times, putting a bit of water, only a little, and just sort of brushing them on because you don't want it to activate too much, otherwise you start moving it around which can happen um, and also be careful how you pick it up because if you go and put your thumb on here or you, you pick it up you end up getting it coming off the model and sticking onto your your finger but <coughs> so I just did this decals on the back I'll pop that on there now in theory, we could say we are finished. I say in theory because I still want to do a little bit more weathering on here just to sort of try to add a uniformness to it. But I think actually pretty much, I would say pretty much done there. What I'm going to do is give that just 
a little bit of time just for those decals just to dry off. You can see sometimes like that there, the 334 there, there's a shine on there as I move that around. So that's catching the light, and that's one of the reasons why we want to put a bit of a weathering on there. But, yep, yeah, those are level, those are in the correct position. But they do look a bit new and fresh, so that's what we're going to be doing, is adding that extra little bit of weathering on, just to try to finish that off. And to do that, we're going to try to use these paints that we've got, um, but mix them together to make more of a darker brown, and then just try to use and, and, and very very thin and just try to get that into those places uh, what I might try to do first of all is to use some of the black also a very thin darker one just to pop in the little grills as well just to make those pop out a little bit more like on this one you can see that you've got the black in there so a black wash that's gone in there but actually now we've got that together it is starting to um, definitely starting to look the part now and those tracks with that little bit of metallic brushed over look a lot better now but if you'd imagine those tracks if we painted it all in that color that would just look just odd and just bizarre okay so let's just give that bit of a moment to dry and then we can come back and then just see if we can do a little bit of finely, final wash just to dirty up and make it look a little bit more a bit more used and a bit more uniform over there Right, final push now to get this Tiger one done and complete. So, pretty much um, ready to do, and uh, to be honest, we've used nothing but what's in the kit. Um, even using bits of sprue to stir the paints. Uh, so, I've only been using this brush, which is now pretty knackered. Uh, the paints that are in there, and the glue, and I think the only thing that I did use was a cocktail stick at one point, just to try to do something and um, actually a little, for removing the sprues, a um, little scalpel blade that I used. Um, oh, and for sanding, a um, nail, um, nail file buffer. <coughs> but apart from that, so yeah, what I did use, things behind, not sort of, um, yeah, things that hopefully you could have, I mean, I'm guessing you wouldn't have a scalpel around the house, but you might have a sharp blade, a little standing knife, that was the idea. <clears throat> so, I want to just finish this off by doing some final weathering on here. And just because it's kind of still got a bit of a, a shine on there, we just want to muddy it up a little bit. We've done some pre-shading and I did do a bit of dry brushing just with some black and some of that metallic on there. <clears throat> what I want to do is just put a little bit more into the grills um, around the exhausts, which are a bit clean because they only just went on, and then see if I can make up a bit of a muddy colour. So I've got in here... When I've done the decals, there's a bit of water in there, so I thought, actually, I'm just going to use that water to make, um, <clears throat> first of all, just a black wash. So, bear with me, I'm genuinely making this up as I go along. This, I've just been sort of putting this off, shall we say. So I'm going to take a bit of this, because this is already watered down. And we want to make it even thinner, so I'm just going to pop a bit of that in where the water is. Where's the water? So we've got a bit of water there. That's probably actually. So I'm thinning that right the way down. And you can see how that's literally <coughs> just water with some black in it now. And what I want to try to do is to these little bits here is to sort of brush that over. And hopefully you can see that the, uh, the black paint, being very thin, is just getting drawn to the bottom. Uh, and as the little bubbles of it are popping, so just literally trying to brush that over. And now, if I take a bit of kitchen roll that I was using, the dry brushing, and just try to rub that off. Because I've rubbed that off the surface, it's left the black more in the little <coughs> the little holes, not completely. Maybe here. So this is mainly just water. Yeah, but there's more dirty water than paint.
because this area is going to be a bit dirty and those quite clean exhaust covers. I'm just going to literally just liberally paint over those and some of these areas out the back. Maybe just running a little bit along. Clean that off. It's went down a little bit too much on the side. So I'm just going to let you try and brush that off. Okay, you can see now we're just picking out some of that sort of like that rivet detail in there. Remember, we had some of that pre shading on there as well, so that will all help build it up. We're not looking to actually see individual brush strokes now. So I'm just sort of brushing it on and trying to merge it in a little bit. Don't want fingerprints in there. crevices you can see how water it is by how it's just getting carried around and just try and take the surplus of it off so I'm just dapping it dappling it dappling dappl it if I made up a word It's actually these little bits of raised detail here it's actually starting to pull that out. And again, we're just going to pop a little bit over the wheels in amongst the spokes of that drive wheel there. happen is although that's on there that should as this dries it should sort of clear a little bit as well but we've definitely got a, definitely around this back bit those um <coughs> little ventilation bits looking a lot more 3d and we've also just got a bit more of a, a dirtier texture around the exhausts so actually that would be quite muddy on the bottom bit there we're only using the black at the moment little bit on the insides there don't really look at this bit this I really could be bothered no one's gonna see that bit so but actually that's interesting you can see if I take a little bit of this there's this little bit there I'm just gonna drop a bit hang on let's put some on the brush bit around there and it just starts highlighting that bit of detail there let's do that along as it so you can see it's just sort of gone around the edges of that little uh, raised part there and it's just kind of given it's a filter actually it's just kind of given a bit of a, a an even coverage I mean what I probably should have done was to try to uh, if actually if I hadn't glued these on I could have taken that off Oh, one thing that I do want to do is just pop a little bit over where the decals are, the decals. Not too much on there, just because that will help merge them in a bit. I think I've put too much on there, so it's just trying to get the excess off. But as you try to wipe the excess off, it's going to sort of leave it. And actually what I could do is even just lightly rub it with this. Um, if I was to get a cotton bud, actually, you could sort of do a cotton bud I'm trying to just sort of like rub it off, but this 
isn't going to get into all the little nooks and crannies, so it's going to leave the paint in and around the bits. Here, we, it's quite nice under here now. We're getting a bit more sort of staining, so there's like some oil leaks, those sort of things that have come out. It's looking a bit more muddy, and if you now compare it to the turret, which hasn't been done, which is now looking a lot more cleaner. We'll now do the same, and you can just see how watered down this is. This is actually, um, considering I was dreading doing this, and I was thinking when I make this up as I go along, it's not working too, you know, too bad. So again, I've done a little bit of dry brushing. We want to make sure we get it over those decals as well, just because they're a little bit too white. Oh, and of course, just paint it over the barrel. And what we could try doing is I'm going to do a little, little dab of black just from the lid. And when I say a little, I mean a little, just because I want to make a slightly stronger solution. But solution still. I don't think that worked. That's even weaker. Just to pop in around barrel part because you're just going to have a bit more sort of smoke would have been oh no that hasn't really worked don't worry make sure we get into the crevices as well and just generally I'm just liberally just um, applying it all over that's probably too much. So again, we'll just use this just to drag it over. Again, you can sort of see getting into a little bit of the, the creases around the top. That hatch could do with a little, just to highlight some of those details on there. So you just see, you can see that the black ring of that going around. Now just sort of try to block that away. That's more sort of leaving the black, just sort of picking out those little uh, details there, making that a I'm gonna say it is already 3D obviously, but it just highlights the uh, 3D nature. Oh, okay. What I've done is the decal hadn't dried properly. And just putting this water-based wash on there had actually reactivated the decal. Unfortunately I just noticed that one had moved. Uh, the side ones are still okay. You can see how that had actually softened that. Unfortunately I noticed that and we'll leave that a little bit longer. But that now should into place, careful not to touch the rear. Oh, in you go. And now that top turret is uh, still actually looking a little bit clean actually. But especially on the sides, especially this side. So let's just take a bit more of that. Dab it over. In fact, some of that sort of dripping, holding it level, just sort of did drip down. That's actually how gravity would pull it down. Get rid of some of that excess. There we go. Let's just get into some of those little uh, grooves and recesses. Some of this had dried on a little bit, but by using the damp brush, I might have to just reactivate it a little, but you can see little sort of uh, dirty bits here and there, which is what we want. Okay, um, actually, I was going to say I could. But there's a bit there that's just a bit too obvious. It's a uh, drip, so I'm just trying to break up the edges of it. 
and remove the defined sort of edges. There we go, those rear parts looking a bit more dirty now. And uh, I'm going to give this a go. I'm going to go back to this. I want to just make see if I can make a bit of a muddy colour. Now, you know how when you mix colours you end up getting all muddy colours? So what I want to try to do is take some of this, which is the light brown, a blob of paint on there, put that in with some of the black, and see how I'm merging this together. In the middle, we're now getting, obviously, a, a darker brown. So take a little bit more of that black. Just trying to get the balance. Okay, I'll probably put a bit too now that's gone more of a grey colour. Let's take a bit more of the It's a different darker shade of brown than what we've already got. So what I want to do is now just to use this. Again, we don't want too much of it, but now I just want to try to put this over some of the wheels and some of the bits of the track as well, just for that getting mud in there. So whereas before we were using the uh, metallic colour, that one there, to try to get the uh, the metal on the surface of anything, we want to try to get this a little bit uh, between the tracks. And pretty much mainly to try to cover up the, the gaps, the, you know, the, the dodgy paintwork um, on those uh, tyres. where it looked maybe a little bit too fresh. the same shade which is fine so you're gonna have some variations that's fine no mud guards at the back they're gonna be having a whole load of stuff all splashed up and marked up into them so I shouldn't have put the uh, tracks on first. I should have just sort of, they didn't really need gluing but I did anyway. So it would have been easier to have got the brush in here just to make that a bit darker. Of course that did get the pre-shading under it. off just because this bit here just looks a bit too much and you can see the brush strokes on it so I'm just going to try to just brush that away Okay. 
I mean, that is very odd that they've put something a spade under there, but um, once that's in place, you won't actually see it. One thing I did just remember, <coughs> there's a little package on the front, painted black. I do just want to put a bit of brown over it. And uh, this brush is completely shot. Just because um, I don't think that would have been black. It would have been good to have a darker brown in here without trying to make a darker brown. I mean, the, the brush is almost as wide as the part that I'm trying to paint. <laughs> Okay, so I've just popped that on, and now I'm just going to uh, flick that back off again. So now that doesn't just look like a... Yeah, that just hides that a little bit. It's not quite so obvious. There we go. It just looked a bit too black, a bit too stark. Okay, now this back bit here does seem a little bit... I might have overdone the wash a little bit on there. So just damp that down and just rub it off. I mean, that is also going to have the pre-shading Showing through, I did some dry brushing on it earlier as well. Oh, 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 oh. caught that just in time. That was a bit too vigorous there. Took that decal off. Fortunately, that back bit kept it in place. <sighs> Come on. Um, to be honest, it's <laughs> you can probably tell it's not that much of a gap between the time that I put the decals on and when I'm doing this. Uh, there's something that definitely looks like a brush stroke there. So let's just the water. That should reactivate the paint again. Now ideally what would happen is if you're doing this properly you would use what I'd probably use as something like a humbrol brown wash. But this is a sort of a brown muddy colour already but it's also enamel whereas this uh, what we're using is just sort of like water based so um, the reason I say you might want to use like enamel is enamels and acrylics sort of don't react together once they're dry which means you can sort of be putting more of the wash over and it won't sort of reactivate the paint underneath but if things are properly cured it, it should be fine and by cured I mean not just being dry but it's actually it's not just touched dry it's actually sort of pretty much bonded onto the plastic I would say so I'm putting that sort of muddy colour over the wheels it has dirtied them up and it's just helped make it just knock back that sort of um, the starkness of the the tyres the now aren't just sort of plain black, they've kind of got a bit more of a matte to, on there. Uh, again with the tread. And I reckon I'm going to call that done. Okay. Uh, it might have gone a little bit over the top with some of the weathering in places. Um, to be honest with this, as I say, I'm making up as I go along. Um, remember we did a pre-shading, we've done dry brushing. Uh, I've done some dry, dry brushing with the black, I've done some dry brushing with the metallic colour as well. All this sort of pre-shading going on here. But as long as you don't sort of look too much underneath it, because as I say, I just, it's kind of, it can just handle the... Um, yeah, a quick look, but you start looking in there, that's going to be messy. But essentially so, I'm going to call that pretty much done. So, um, I have got a Sherman 
Firefly thing to do, which is a similar similar sort of kit where it comes with a couple of paints, brush. And what I might do for that is instead of doing a pure um, straight out of the box and only using what's in the box, is I might then with that one take it a little bit further. But what I would do is I may see if I can use the paints that are in the box um, and then start using a few sort of um, model making sort of things. So um, maybe the sort of thing where maybe you built a couple of models and you start actually getting a bit more of a collection of things or you don't mind popping along to a local model shop and maybe buying a couple of extra bits and pieces. Uh, like masking tape, those sort of things, just to then start bringing your model a, a bit more to life, but without going fully over the top, as in not doing, you know, not using airbrushes, not using too many things, but maybe, maybe um, putting a um, gloss coat on, something like that, perhaps. But I'm going to call that little tiger one done. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you sort of went along. I, I'm looking at it. I'm thinking I've probably done a bit too much weathering now on there, but I've never made up a wash using these little pots of acrylic paint. And to be honest, um, it does actually highlight some of that detail. There is the very fine detail in there. I remember when I built this version of it, thinking, you know, that the, that sort of detail on there was you know, pretty good. There's a few little extra bits on here. The track, you know, each, each wheel got made up individually painted um, you've got extra little bits like tow ropes spare bits of track on there this one is the much more simplified version but um, yeah by muddying up a little bit putting that on there it does make it look a bit more dirty but it does make it look a bit more a bit more worn which I think is really what you're looking for uh, but we also still have those details sort of showing through so I hope you've enjoyed that. Something a little bit different. Um, I want to start trying to get into a few other bigger builds, but just good to do something a little bit smaller. So please, if you've enjoyed this and you've learned something from it, uh, please hit the like and subscribe. Um, really is appreciated. Uh, do any comments. I do try to get back to comments, and hopefully I'll catch you soon. So I've been Rob. Thanks for watching Rob's Models, and uh, happy modelling.